Hello, my name is Brandon, and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. If you are new to the channel, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, it is great to have you back. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with classmates, colleagues, or friends, or anyone else you think might benefit from watching. So now that we are introduced, let's go ahead and get started. So this video is the next in my series on simple linear regression. However, I will say that this video does have implications beyond just simple regression. So this video is about residual analysis. And residual analysis will do two primary things for us. Number one, it will tell us how good the model we have produced fits the data we are looking at. Or in other words, how is our error? Is our error large or is our error small? Number two, and maybe most importantly, it will tell us whether or not the model we are using is actually appropriate for the data we are looking at. So as you know probably by now, there are many, many ways to model a data set. And there are certain models that are more appropriate than others. And our residuals can help us decide that. So residual analysis goes well beyond just statistics. It goes into higher level statistics. It goes into data science. And of course, machine learning when we're talking about which model we should choose for our application. So let's go ahead and get started learning about residual analysis. So this video is brought to you by the great people at The Great Courses Plus. If you're watching this, chances are you need to or want to or like to learn things. And there are a few better places to learn pretty much anything you want than The Great Courses Plus. They have over 10,000 video lectures on everything from photography to literature, philosophy to finance, and yes, statistics. So please check out the link in the description below and learn how you can get a free trial to The Great Courses Plus. It helps my channel and it also helps them. So let's go ahead and learn about residuals. So here is the data we've been using for this entire playlist. I'm not gonna go into it uh, very much, but in case you're new to the playlist, I just wanna go over it very briefly. So you go into a restaurant, you eat a meal, and then of course they give you the bill at the end. And usually, especially here in the US, maybe not everywhere in the world, but here in the US, it's customary to tip the server for that meal. So we have a bill amount along the bottom, our X axis, and then we have the tip amount along the Y axis. And of course, each diamond there is the intersection of those two things. So as far as the data table goes, you can see that over here on the right. So our first bill was $34, and the server had a tip of $5 and so on and so forth. And then the mean of each variable, at least for the bill amount, was $74, and for the tip amount was $10. And that's the data set we'll be using. So when we put that data into a regression model, this is what we get. So first you can see, obviously, the regression line that goes across the middle of our graph here. We have a centroid of 74 and 10. Again, that's just the mean of each variable. We have a regression line of y equals 0.1462x, minus 0 0.8188, slightly different in those two regression lines, and again, it's just because of differences in the algorithms of software, but they're basically the same. So we have a slope of 0 0.1462, and we have our intercept down there in the lower left. And of course, we can interpret this overall is that as the bill amount goes up, the tip amount goes up. That's why our slope is positive. And as far as the actual numbers go, for every dollar increase in the meal bill, we would expect or predict an increase in the tip amount of about 15 cents. So again, this is the very simple small data set model we're using, and this is what it looks like when we actually plot it and put it into a regression model. So what is residual analysis? So by definition, a residual is the quantity remaining after other things have sort of been taken into account, so a subtracted or allowed for. So in our daily lives, most of us get a paycheck of some sort, and then we have our bills to pay. We have to buy food and other things. And hopefully at the end of all that, we have a little bit of money left to, to save or to use for leisure or whatever else. So once all those obligations that we have to do are done, that little bit of money we might have left is actually the residual of our paycheck. So a residual is literally what's left over. So in this case, it's what's left over after our model is done explaining or is run out of the ability to explain the data that we are looking at. So in this case, in stats, it's the difference between the observed value of the dependent variable, which in this case is the tip amount, and what is predicted 
by the regression model. So our regression line in the previous slide is actually a way of predicting what tip we would expect for a given meal amount. But we also have observed values in there, and the residual is the difference between those two. So for example, if the regression model predicts a tip of $10 for a given meal, but the observed tip that actually happens on the table is $12, then the residual amount is 12 minus 10, or two. The notation, which we have seen before in many cases, is y sub i minus y hat sub i. And that is just the observed tip minus the predicted tip. So remember the standard regression model, y equals beta sub zero, which is the intercept, plus beta sub one, the slope, and then we have an error term. So the first two terms are our regression model, and then the end is the error. So the regression model there at the beginning is hopefully going to explain a lot of the variation in our dependent variable, but it's probably not going to explain all of it. It's very rare that it will explain all of it. So there's some left. So how do we explain what's left? And that's what we call it residuals. So only part of the variance in the dependent variable will be explained by the values of the independent variable. So we see that as the value of R squared in regression output, which again is just the sum of squares due to regression the SSR, divided by the total sum of squares. So that is the variance explained by the model itself, but that's not the whole story. So the variance left unexplained is due to the model error. So our model will fit the data to a certain point, but then there's some left, and that's our error, or our residuals. So you can think of it how far off, if you're thinking negatively, or if you're thinking positively, how good the model accounts for the variance in the dependent variable. So it's going to explain a good chunk of it, hopefully, but then there's probably going to be some left. So this graph, there's a lot of things going on, and it's actually from a previous video I did on regression. So if you go back in the playlist, you'll see the first time I went over this slide. So just to set the stage real quick and kind of refresh your memory, and if you're new to the playlist, you'll get this information. So a couple of things are going on here. So the slope line is our regression line. So the line with the purple dots that goes from lower left to upper right, that's actually our regression line of the equation up here in the upper left. Now the purple dots are actually predicted values. So it should make sense that the purple dots on the line are predicted values explained by the regression equation up here in the upper left. Now you have a dashed line across the middle here. So that is the mean of the dependent variable. So the mean tip amount was $10. So we create a line that's flat, right there at the mean of the dependent variable, and that is that line, it has a couple of black dots on it. Then you have some orange diamonds. Those are our observed values. So we have three kind of things going on here. We have the regression line with the purple dots for the predicted values. We have the dashed line with the black dot, which is the mean of the dependent variable. And then we have the orange diamonds, which are the actual observed values. So now let's talk about what SSE, SST, and SSR are very quickly. So first, SSE. So here's the equation, y sub i minus y hat sub i. So again, that's just observed minus predicted, squared, and then summed up. That's what SSE is, that's the error. Now in distance terms, it is this. So remember, the purple dot is the predicted, the orange diamond is the observed, so it's just the difference between those two, squared, and then summed up for each point along the line. That's what SSE is. So there's one up there in the upper right. So next we have the SST, or total sum of squares. So that's y sub i minus y bar squared. So remember, y sub i is the observed value, which in the orange diamond, minus y bar, which is the black dashed line across the middle. So we take that distance squared and sum them up, and that's that distance. So that's the distance between the orange diamond and the black dot. That's there, and there's another one there. Now you'll notice by looking at these brackets, there's one left, and that is SSR, or a sum of squares due to our model, or sum of squares due to regression. So that is y hat i, that's the purple dot, the predicted value, minus y bar, which is the mean of the dependent variable. You square those, sum them up, and that's that distance there and there. So you can see that we have three measures going on. SSC, sum of squares due to error, total sum of squares, and our sum of squares due to regression. You'll notice that, over, like over here on the right is a good example, if you see the total sum of squares, 
over here in this orange bracket in the far right, that is actually made up, literally, of the SSC there in the green and the SSR in the purple. So first, a few model assumptions. So here's our standard regression model we talked about, and here are some assumptions that we make in info. Number one, the residuals offer the best information about the error term. So again, the B, the beta sub zero and beta sub one, that's a regression model. They won't explain everything. They'll explain some of it, but not everything. So we have the epsilon or the error that's left. The residuals offer the best information about the remainder of the story in our model. Two, the expected value of the error term or the mean of the error term is zero. For all values of the independent variable X, the variance of the error term is the same. So what we're saying there is that regardless in this case of what meal amount you have, a meal of $30, $50, $75, the variance of the error term at each point along that independent variable is constant. It's the same. The values of the error term are independent of each other. So there is no relationship between the error term. And the error term follows a normal distribution. So if we took all of our errors or all of our residuals, we put them in their own distribution and looked at it, it should follow a normal bell-shaped distribution. So again, here are the residuals in this model. I just want to put them up here because we're going to graph them here in a second. Now what we can do is graph our residuals, and often the best way to look at residuals is on a graph or a scatter plot. So what we're going to do is graph the residuals against two things. We're going to graph them against the independent variable, which is the meal amount here along the bottom, and then we're going to graph them as a function of the predicted values. So let's go ahead and look at both of those graphs. So first we have the residual plot against the independent variable, in this case the x variable, which is the bill amount. And here's what that looks like. So you can see that the residual for the first meal amount over here on the left hand side, it was like a meal of like $37. The residual for that was a little bit under one. And then for the meal amount here in the middle of around 50 or $51, the residual was a little bit less than a negative two and so on and so forth. So these are the residuals plotted against the bill amount for each one. Next, and maybe most importantly, we're gonna plot the residuals against the predicted values. So here's that. So how do we interpret this? Let's look at the first dot over here on the left. For that first meal, the difference between the predicted tip by our model and the observed tip that we had in the data was a little bit less than one. Now look at the second one. What we're saying is that the predicted tip that our model gave us and the observed tip, the difference between those two was a little bit less than negative two. So you can see that what we're doing here is actually looking at the observed versus the predicted. And this is the residual plot against Y hat or the predicted dependent variable. And this is probably the most important one when we're looking at patterns in the residuals. So let's talk about some general patterns. And these are again just generic graphs, kind of look for different ways that residuals can appear on graphs. The first case is kind of the best case. So if we graph our residuals like we did in the previous two slides, and they kind of look like this, they're kind of evenly scattered left to right, up to down, all over the graph, that's a good thing, okay? They kind of fit all here in the middle. There's no other pattern to them except for being uniformly distributed pretty much everywhere. And there's a technical word for that. It's called homoscedasticity or constant variance. So we can see that the variance along the residuals here in the middle is constant from left to right. Okay, there's no sort of bending or bowing or you know squeezing or anything like that. All the residuals are in a nice even distribution across the graph. So constant variance. But we could have something that looks like this. So that is called heteroscedasticity or non-constant variance. On the left side of our graph, the residuals are much more spread out than they are over here on the right side. And this might cause us some pause, and we'll see why in a minute, that our residuals are not evenly distributed across the graph left to right. So the error is larger down on this end than it is over on the right end, and that can be a problem. So another type of heteroscedasticity is nonlinear data or using the wrong model. So here, our residuals are like in a bow shape. And actually, we're gonna see this in other videos coming up when we talk about nonlinear models. But the residuals follow an arc, either from lower left and up and down to the right, or maybe another direction. 
You know, it could be sort of a half of an arc or something like that. But this might show us that our data is actually nonlinear. And a linear model may not be appropriate for this data. Now, in the next few videos coming up, we're going to talk about nonlinear models. And you will see this pattern in the residuals when we go to look at which model is best for fitting the data. So here is the same residual plot we had before. So residual plot against y hat are predicted values. And there we go. So here along the bottom, we have a predicted tip amount, and then we have the difference with that in the observed. That's the distance over here in the residual. So what pattern does this follow? Well, it follows a fairly standard pattern left to right. Again, we only have six observations in this very small data set, so you might see patterns where there aren't really any. But in this case, I think it's fair to assume that the residuals you know, occur on the top and bottom of our plot, and they're about they're the same left to right. There's no you know, cone shape or there's no curve to them or anything like that. So this is a good residual plot. So here are our two plots side by side. So first we have residual plot against the independent variable, which is the bill amount. So there, there, and there. Again, nice pattern in, in that there's no pattern. Then over here we have the same with the residual plot against the predicted, a dependent variable, same thing. So these look pretty good. So now let's put it all together. We have our bill amount line fit plot. So first we have our observed values here in the orange circles. And then on top of that, we can put our regression line and then our predicted values there in the yellow circles. So we can see how each observed value falls above or below the actual predicted amount. And those are our residuals. So here's our bill amount residual plot. So there, there, there again. And what pattern? Well, no real pattern. That's a good residual plot. So a few final points. So what happens if the residual analysis reveals heteroscedasticity? So that means that our residuals are not sort of uniformly distributed across a residual plot. They might have a curvature to them, or they might be non-constant, so like a cone shape in one direction. What can we do? So we could rebuild the model with different independent variable or variables. That's always one option. We could perform some type of transformation on the nonlinear data. So you know, take a logarithm or something else for that variable. We could fit a nonlinear regression model. So linear regression is not the only type. There are many other types. There's nonlinear, there's like piecewise regression, all kinds. But be careful, don't overfit the model. And in my next playlist where we talk about nonlinear regression, we will talk a lot about the dangers of overfitting. So a final question is that, well, are there sort of quantitative statistical tests for residuals? And the answer is yes. There is the broch pagan test, the white test, and the NCV test, which is non-constant variance test. However, for the sake of this video, we're not going to go into that. Those are more advanced. And I actually think there are other ways, both visually and computationally, to figure out if you have a problem with your residuals. So we'll stick to that for now. But I just want you to be aware that there are some statistical tests out there for residuals. This video is brought to you by The Great Courses Plus, where you can get unlimited access to over 10,000 different video lectures taught by award-winning professors from the Ivy League and other top schools around the world. You can learn about anything that interests you, science, literature, and yes, statistics, like this lecture from Professor Talithia Williams called Linear Regression Models and Assumptions from her course, Learning Statistics, Concepts, and Applications in R. And right now, The Great Courses Plus is offering my viewers a free trial and is now also optimized for Australia and the UK. So go to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash Brandon Foltz, my name, to have access to the 10,000 video lecture library or click on the link in the description below. Okay, so that wraps up our video on residual analysis in simple linear regression. Again, it is a very important concept when figuring out, one, how good our model is, and two, whether the model we're trying to implement is actually appropriate for the data we have. And it does have implications for other areas more advanced and other fields, such as advanced stats and data science and machine learning and things of that nature. So I hope you found this very visual, very insightful, and it's something you can take with you as you progress. So thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again in our next video. Take care.